All right, let's jump on to the comma delimited parameters train. Okay, sounds good. So uh, this is uh, about splitting strings. This is a long time favorite topic of mine. It's been beaten to death, but I still see people spending hours of backbreaking labor trying to squeeze an extra second or two out of uh, an inherently inefficient T-SQL approach to parsing uh, a comma separated parameter. So they, uh, you know, people will use a, a single parameter to pass in a list of values that are separated by commas. So even when using CLR, which is pretty good at string handling. Uh, this approach is antiquated, and I implore people to start looking at better ways of doing this. Um, so I'm going to grab the screen and take a look at a quick example. OK, so um, this example we're going to look at is just a, a store procedure that, uh, where we pass in a comma-separated list of order IDs. Um, so these are integers. Say that a user selected these order IDs from a multi-select dropdown on a form or a series of checkboxes. Uh, maybe they're auditing orders, something like that. But they need to return a set of, uh, of orders that don't really make sense um, you know, to, to do individually. So they want to grab mm -hmm. a, a list of some kind, and they want to do it as efficiently as possible. So sure. the, typical, the typical way that people have done this uh, is a, a split function. So implementations may vary. I'm sure there are a hundred or more ways to write a split function uh, that will split a list of integers. This is the one that, that I typically use. It uses the numbers table that we talked about in my previous example to basically um, find all of the occurrences of our delimiter, in this case it's a comma, uh, and make a set out of the values in between. So I don't want to elaborate too much on the, on the split function itself. Um, because I don't want, I'm not trying to teach people how to write a split function. I'm teaching right. people, I want to teach people how to not use a split function anymore. So that's our split function. Um, and it, this will be downloadable, so you'll be able to look at that closer if you want. Now, this store procedure is the one that makes use of the split function. So basically, we pass in the, the CSV. We can use varchar here because uh, we're passing integers. So we don't have to worry about Unicode. Typically, when you're passing in comma separated strings, you have to use nvarchar. Uh, because you're you're typically uh, you have to worry about Unicode most of the time mm -hmm. when you're dealing with strings. But when you're dealing with ints, you don't have to, so you can use uh, half the size basically of that of that string that's coming in. So the store procedure just basically uh, does a select from sales order header enlarged. This is another thing that Jonathan Cahayas has uh, has graced us with is this uh, a script that he has to enlarge the sales. Uh, the sales order header and sales order detail tables so that you can run more meaningful demos that actually uh, do enough I.O. or enough CPU to demonstrate the differences in performance that you can't really see from the, the base AdventureWorks tables. So uh, that, that's basically what it does. And then uh, if we go to the next example, so another way that people do this is they'll just append that CSV parameter into Dynamic SQL. So you can't just you, you can't just say in and then pass in the parameter because it's the wrong data type, right? You're you're going to be looking for sales order IDs that ha that are equal to this big long string. So, but if you do it with dynamic SQL, you can place that constant in there, and when it gets evaluated, it'll actually be the, the comma separated set of values, which by rights should be pretty efficient. Uh, and then another way we can do it is uh, to use a table value parameter. This is something that's new in SQL Server 2008. Uh, it's extremely powerful, and I highly recommend you look into it. So basically, what we do first is we create a table type. So I'm just using a, a generic name here called numbers. Um, conflicts with my numbers table, but that's in a different database, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, I probably could have used a, a better name, but I wanted to make this as generic as possible. So basically, it's a, it's a table type that's going to hold a set of unique numbers. And then the store procedure is only slightly different from the, uh, the split function. So we have uh, our create procedure. We pass in a parameter as that, the, the types. So that, that parameter name, or that the data type, is actually the table type that you see right above. And we have to uh, use read-only. This is a limitation of TVPs for now that will hopefully, hopefully be lifted in some future version. And then down below, just like with the split function, we just join against it. OK, so how efficient is this? Well, let's test it out. Um, uh, you'll notice that I used select into 
as opposed to just select. And the reason I did this is so that I could run this procedure many, many times without worrying about consuming the result set in the client, right? So if I just dump stuff into a temp table, I'm performing all of the logical operations that I would do if I, was, if I were running these queries directly, uh, and actually some extra I.O. By, by dumping it into a table, uh, but I don't have to worry about consuming a thousand result sets if I run the store procedure a thousand times, right? Nothing's gonna get returned to the client. Mm -hmm. So the split function, we have a set of 30. I, I actually pick these values by doing a select from the sales order header and large table, uh, select top 30, order by new ID. So these are absolutely random values, uh, but I'm, I pick them specifically so that I could reuse the same set. So I'm not getting any variations here because uh, you know my, my second random set was more selective or less selective or what have you, which shouldn't matter because it's unique in that table. But uh, you know, I just want to use the same values just to be consistent. So basically, we declare a, a, a date time two variable and an integer. These are used for measuring the time and keeping a counter. Uh, we declare a CSV, this comma separated list of hard coded values, and then we loop through a thousand times and execute the store procedure. And then at the end, we, we see how long it takes. And we do the same thing for a dynamic SQL, and then for, uh, and I, I called the output unsafe dynamic SQL because one of the problems with this is that it ex exposes you to SQL injection. And then finally, for the uh, for the TVP, we have to populate the value slightly differently. So we declare a parameter of that type, and then we insert uh, using the multi-values clause, um, and then we execute that store procedure a thousand times. And let's see how these perform. Back up to split. Let's run these. We'll see how long they take. All right. So the split function took about two seconds. The dynamic SQL took two and a half seconds, mm -hmm. and the TVP took under a second. Now I'm going to run these again just so that uh, you know I'm not hiding a rabbit in a hat or something, or, or dealing with uh, you know one of these sets is cached and one of them is not that kind of thing. Pretty consistent performance. About two seconds for the split function, two and a half seconds for the dynamic SQL, and under a second for the TVP. And then if we look at the plans, plans here. So these are the same things, except now we're just looking at one instance of each invocation. We're not, uh, we're not worrying about uh, running them a thousand times and comparing the time. We just want to see what the, what the plans look like. Right, right. Um, and we see some fun stuff here. So we have really high number of reads for the split function. Uh, really high number of uh, estimated or really high estimated CPU um, duration for the split function and dynamic SQL are about the same. But again, this is one run of a, a small set of thirty. Uh, we have to take into account that you know as that as that set of um, order IDs that you're passing in gets larger, that this this will go up and be uh, more problematic. We also didn't do any other table access. We only accessed that that cluster index. Uh, and the, you know, if you're doing other joins and everything else, you can see that the, this will have a, a cascading effect. Uh, another interesting thing to look at is if we go into the split function and look at the uh, estimated rows versus actual rows, we see that uh, we get a, a factor of about a thousand for every invocation of the table value function. So for so we have thirty rows, we invoke the table value function. Uh, 30 times, multiply that by 1,000, we get 30,000, uh, and then some, some additional for the other stuff that's going on. Our estimated rows are much higher, uh, and we don't see that symptom on any of the others. All right, so uh, for this one, if we dig down, we've got a select here, and we're a little bit off. When we look at the TVP, we're identical. So estimated mm. rows and actual rows, SQL Server knows exactly what it's after. Uh, as opposed to the other two cases where it can be way off because of the uh, table value function or not being able to sniff what that uh, what that dynamic SQL parameter would be. Okay, so when I wrote this, I first wrote it uh, using exists. So the TVP, if we go back to the TVP store procedure, it has a join, right? So if we go up a little bit, I use inner join IDs as I. Um, what I want to do is I want to revisit this a little bit and just take a little tangent, if that's okay, Kevin. Absolutely. Uh, about, I want to talk about just generalizing about observed behavior. 
So when I first wrote this, like I said, I wrote it using exists. Um, since I didn't actually need to return any data from the TVP, I thought that since prevailing wisdom is that exists is as or more efficient than equivalent join, I would get the best efficiency out of using that approach. Would you say that's a, a pretty common conception, Kevin, that mm -hmm. uh, exists is as good or better than a join? Yeah, te definitely. So uh, we're going to peel the onion a bit here and compare these and really, really see uh, if that's always the case. And I've, again, I just want to stress that you should not rely on something you observe once or in a, in a few narrow scenarios to be universally applicable. It's not always the case in SQL Server. So uh, I created a new, a new set of store procedures for this just to completely isolate from the other things that I've done. One takes uh, the TVP and uses the join. This is exactly the same as the demo we just did. And the other one is what I originally wrote, uh, which is an exists. So because I don't need to perform a join here, I can just say where exists, because all I'm looking at is are the three columns from the sales order header and large table. I'm not actually returning any output from the table value parameter. So I can just use exists, and hopefully, because what I usually think is that uh, I'm going to potentially benefit from some short circuiting here, or at worst, it'll be the same behavior as the join, depending on whether the, the, uh, the join in here is unique or not, and, and selectivity and, and other things like that. But I would expect the behavior to be quite similar. So I've created these procedures already, and I'm gonna run the same test as I did before. Uh, declare a variable that tracks the time, and then the loop counter, insert into the TVP, and then measure the duration. Do, the, do one for exists and one for join. Back up here. All right, looks good. All right. So we run these. The exists takes one and a half seconds. The join takes under a second. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. I bet you didn't see that coming, Kevin. I did not. Yeah, so the join is outperforming the exists by two to one, roughly. Now, a, little bit, a little bit lower than that, but pretty close. So let's run it again to make sure there's no caching or other uh, dirty tricks going on. Nope, a second and a half and under a second. So we take a look at the plans in Plan Explorer. Got them here already loaded so we don't have to run them again. Huh, everything looks pretty similar. So if we mm -hmm. take a look at these, we've got uh, slightly higher duration, but again, three milliseconds versus two milliseconds for a, a single call. That shouldn't really be that, that much of a difference when you look at it on mass. Uh, a little bit higher CPU, a little bit higher reads. I wonder why there would be higher reads for the exists versus the join. They should be the same, I think. So if or we look at the, sometimes uh, even less because the you know the exists will stop once it finds the first record. Right, sometimes we see some short circuiting. So if we look at the diagrams for the select, all right, so we've got a table insert, a nested loop, a cluster index scan, and a cluster index seek. Seems pretty typical. If we look at the join method, you know, table insert, a nested loop, a clustered index, these are the same. These are identical. Um, I can't figure out what's different, except for the, the reads number here. If we look at the table I.O., if we look at the table I.O. tab, so we've got 100 logical reads on the, on the base table, two logical reads on our table very, uh, on our TVP, and then if we look at the uh, exists version, Oh, same thing, 100 logical reads and two on the uh, on the TVP. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save you some suspense because I could look around and, and poke around here for an hour trying to find something. If we move to the expressions tab, if we look at the join, we've got two expressions here, computes, two compute scalers. Mm -hmm. um, and if we look at the exists, we have an extra expression. Ah. So here we have set identity. Um, this is interesting. So. This extra expression is actually the cause of our pain, uh, but we might never know that. If we had looked at this in Management Studio, let me take a look at this in Management Studio. We look at, take a look at these plans. Uh, so this is the same query that I just ran. Um, take a look at this. We've got 48%, 48%. So this is the first number that people often look at, right? Yep. And so what people are going to do when they look at these two things, oh, they're the same. These have the exact same performance characteristics. And if you look at all of the properties, all of the tool tips, all, these, all of these things are gonna tell you the exact same things, right? So none of these factors change. 
So looking at Management Studio, I had no idea why these are different. Right. So we go back to Plan Explorer. Um, yeah. So I'm going to explain why this happens. Now, if you remember, I used Select Into in these procedures so I could run them over and over again without having to consume the result sets in the client. Well, Select Into has some interesting properties depending on the source query. Uh, most importantly, and what's affecting us here, we maintain or retain the identity property if the from clause is restricted to one table. Mm. So that's that's true in the exist case, since the other reference is filtered, uh, but not in the join case, which explicitly lists two tables. So the extra I.O. and CPU involved is basically SQL Server setting uh, identity insert on in order to populate the explicit values in that new temp table we created. Whereas in the join case, we're just selecting into and so we're saving, obviously we're saving some duration there if you look at the, the, the case where we ran it a thousand times. We're, we're saving half the time, roughly, uh, by not having to worry about that identity column. So some pretty interesting stuff, but not to toot our horn too much, but this would have been really tough to track down in Management Studio. Um, so if you're not using Plan Explorer, why not? Um, yeah, wow, good catch. So, so the morals here to uh, my talking about splitting strings, one is if you're currently using some kind of split function or dynamic SQL to deal with uh, comma-separated parameters, think about using TVPs instead. They might not work better, but they could. Uh, you just need to change your application to send a data table or some similar struct as a, uh, a parameter instead of sending in a string. And the other is to be very careful about making generalizations about observed behavior or even trusting too much in what an estimated or even an actual plan in Management Studio might tell you. Uh, in this case, I would have no idea how to explain the difference in duration, since it defies the typical wisdom uh, about how it exists work and how it, it can never be worse than a join. Uh, and there's nothing in the plan really that gives you any idea why the performance is different. So uh, this is stuff that we pull out of the XML that uh, would be very hard to track down yourself. Wow. Yeah, that I, I didn't even know that it would uh, make it so easy to find that. That's that is neat. 